Hello students, welcome to week two of Essential Skills. I am going to go over some library skills for you, and I just want to make sure everybody completely grasps um, what I'm asking you to do. So this is a very short assignment, but this will just give me the feedback to let me know that everyone's ready to move on. Now, I, I often like to talk about this, but I have had um, every type of student in my program from a student who got their GED 20 years ago, and I have also graduated two MDs and one DO. So I have my students that span across so many levels of understanding and education, and it's really important to me to bring us all together on the same page. And in order to do this, next week I'm going to ask you to write a research paper, and from what I understand, some people are very well versed in it, and some people are not. But the most important thing that you need for your research paper are your sources. And what we require, um, not only in this class, but um, in collegiate writing, college writing, we require um, scientific journal articles. And what that means is um, you can't use Wikipedia for a uh, reference. You can't use something random that you got on the internet for a reference. Um, professional journal articles are journal articles written by people actually doing the science. So they create a study that they want to work on. They recruit their study population and they actually do the study. And when the study is over, that scientist writes a paper and reports on it. And there are the, these types of papers in all disciplines. And I just want to show you what one of these look like if you've never seen them before. So um, here we are at the CCBC um, homepage. And when you go to resources for students and pull down to library and click on it, you come up with this page. And this is a lot more impressive than it looks because Years ago, when I was going to college and when I was in high school, if you wanted to find a professional journal article to use as a reference, you had to go to the library. Um, you had to go to the library, you had to find the article you wanted, you had to print it out, and that was a whole day exercise on its own before you came home and read the article and wrote your paper. So um, what we have for you at CCBC is an online digital library. And you can come to this page and say, for instance, you wanted to write a paper on obstructive sleep apnea and behavior, behavioral issues in children. And be as specific as you want to be, because then your paper um, will have more specific answers to the questions you want to ask. We're also going to tick this right here where it says scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles only. So when these scientists write their paper and submit it to a journal, they have a board of their peers who review the journal and make sure it is new science and applicable to the um, journal that they are applying to. And so as you click search, this database will come up and go through all of these um, articles that have been written on this particular topic. Now over here in the publication date area, I like it when it's within the last 10 years, but if you find a great journal article that you feel is really vital to what you're trying to talk about, then I will accept whatever, however far back it's going to go. So let me see what is a good one. Okay. Um, memory and memory consolidation, that means memory, remembering for a long period of time, um, and children with sleep disorders. Okay, say this is a, um, one of the papers that you want to um, you, utilize. Um, here listed um, are all of the scientists that were on this paper. Frontiers in Human Neuroscience is the journal that this paper was submitted to and pu published in. Um, and it gives you all this other information, as well as the date when it was published. So I'm going to click on this, and it gives you a little bit of a rundown, you know, the paper, the um, journal that it's from, um, and an abstract of what the paper wanted to achieve. So over here on the right-hand side, um, you have this tab called Cite. Click on it. For the purposes of this program, we are going to use 
the APA 7th edition, American um, Psychology, Psychological Association. This is a type of format that our paper is going to be in. So there's all these types of formats that you can use for your paper. We're going to use APA 7th edition. Now, in your laboratory, um, when you go to the lab, I guess for... Um, for intro to polysomnography or whatever it is that you go to the lab for, even if you're here for basic math. In our laboratory, I have an APA textbook that walks you through the process in, in great detail, although I'll be showing you videos on how this process works. So basically, you copy this in its entirety, and then now we're going to move over to our our blank Word document. So typically what everyone does first are the references, because that's what we're working on right now. You have to get your references before you actually start writing the paper, so that's why most people work on this first. And I would copy and paste this journal article as my first article that I'm using. Now we're going to go back to the search area to see what else is available for us. And here we are back to the search area. Alrighty. Um, let me, since there are only eight that came up, and I'm being super specific, let's say um, sleep disorders instead of just obstructive sleep apnea. And see if I come up with more. And yes, I do come up with more, and this is great. Um, and here are a bunch of other journal articles. Okay. Insomnia in children with autism. Um, sleep problems before and after COVID. Um, and so if you come up with another journal article that you want to include. <laughs> so here's a sleep disorder and behavioral disorders. Okay. So we're going to click on this PDF so I can show you what a professional journal article looks like. And this is what it looks like. Um, here is the, it's in the European Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Journal, and this paper, here is the title. Here are the scientists on the paper. And the way this reads is first they have an abstract, which is an overview of everything. What they wanted to look for, what they, how they did it, and what they found. And it's, all journal articles are set up as an introduction, giving you the background, which really has a good body of information for you to utilize a methods, which is how they did it, the results and the resulting factors that they got, and sometimes it'll have data here, and sometimes at the end it will have a conclusion paragraph too. Um, and here they have a discussion paragraph because they want to um, discuss more about what they found, and they also put in areas for more research. So if you've never seen one of these papers before, that's fine. We're going to work on this together. But if you remember from like elementary school when you studied the scientific method and you did whatever project that you did, um, each project had to have a hypothesis um, and the data that you had and the results. And this is basically the same thing but in a grown-up format for scientists. So the scientific method is still very much used and alive and well. So um, I really like this paper. So what you can do is you can save paper as and save it to your desktop just so you don't lose it um, as you're doing your continual search. Um, and I'm going to go back to the listing because I want to cite this one too. Okay, here we are. So I'm going to click on this. And then over here, our little magic button that cites everything. And previously, before when I had to write papers and when everybody had to write papers before they, we had this technology, we had to look at <laughs> an APA book and look at how they wanted the references to look like this and painstakingly type everyone out and hope that you just got it right. But here's another one that we're going to copy and paste to our reference sheet and I'm going to find one more because whenever I ask you to write a paper, I'm going to ask you to do have three ref references. All right, and let's get one more. All right, great. So here's another one um, about children with sleep disorders. So I'm going to click on this, 
and then click on site and then copy this and also put it on my Word document like I showed you I did before. And let's see what this PDF looks like. Because most journal articles look the same, but some of them are just set up a little bit differently. And so this one is set up this way. Um, they have the abstract here. They have all of the, um, where all the scientists are from on this side. And then it's basically set up the same way with the introduction and how they completed their work in that field. So now I'm going to bump you back over to your paper. Here we are. So um, our reference sheet is done right now. So this is how um, you put everything in official APA style. So we go up to the top here and we make everything in Times New Roman because that's standard for APA style. So we go to Times New Roman and 12 point font. We also make everything double spaced and then just this title of references is centered. We have an extra space in here. And also, this is something that they do um, for your references. We copy all of them, um, and then we do an indentation like this. And you'll see this on papers as well. But now that you're finished collecting all of your references, you allow that to be at least the third page. And then here, what you were right here, um, let me get a um, example from a sample paper. Alrighty. I will also give you guys a sample paper or a couple of them just so you see how this looks. So basically what you put here, and what's not coming up, I was just going to cut and paste, is you put your name, um, you put the title of the class, um, you put the title of your paper, and then you put the date. Also, um, before the date, you usually list um, whoever is teaching the class. There we go. So this is the, the cover sheet of your paper. Here's where you write the body of your paper, and here's where your references are. But for this particular assignment, the only page I want are your references. So what I want you to do is think about what you want to write about next week. Get three good references. You don't necessarily have to use these three if you decide you want to use another one, but I just want to make sure that you understand how to get references from our digital library, and also you can download those documents and read them so you can make sure that you can complete your assignment next week. And so um, I'll be looking forward to seeing this. This will be in week two's assignments, and if you have any questions about our library, please contact me and I'll walk you through it. See you later.